The role of neutral countries during World War II is frequently overlooked by mainstream history, and this isn't exactly surprising. Most audiences just want to hear about the quote-unquote big players, and all of the exciting battles that they took part in. But World War II was a global conflict. It engulfed life in every nation regardless of participation. Therefore, the often overlooked yet very interesting perspective of neutral countries during World War II serves as an excellent alternative to explore for people interested in understanding the sheer scale of the conflict. In my opinion, the best case study of this is Francoist Spain. Fresh out of a civil war in 1939, Spanish leadership fought numerous diplomatic battles to rebuild the Spanish state and play both the Allies and Axis against each other. But what was the key factor that made Spain such an important diplomatic ally for both sides? The answer lies in one valuable material. Tungsten. First, we need a bit of context as to what tungsten is and why it was so important for Spain during World War II. Tungsten, also known by its alternative name, Wolfram, is a metal element utilised for various industrial purposes. It possesses desirable traits such as a resistance to hot temperatures, strength and hardness that makes it ideal in the production of heavy ballistics. A key example of this is Germany's usage of tungsten in anti-tank shells during World War II. Now Spain was a very unstable nation throughout the first half of the 20th century. Its position as a major power had been lost after the humiliating defeat in the Spanish-American War in 1896. Although Spain avoided being dragged into the chaotic cluster of World War I, the nation still suffered from extreme economic poverty and political turmoil throughout the 1910s and 1920s, eventually resulting in the collapse of the Spanish monarchy and establishment of the Second Spanish Republic in 1931. The new provisional government had a tenuous control over the country at best, being led by a mixture of socialist revolutionaries, left-leaning progressives and anarcho-syndicalists. This leadership struggled with its relationship to the Spanish military, whose officer corps consisted mostly of monarchist sympathisers and right-wing reactionaries. And so proceeds five years of complicated political scandals, rivalries, strikes, economic turmoil, assassinations and gang violence. I'm grossly oversimplifying here, but essentially by 1936, Spain descended into anarchy following a general election, culminating in the army revolting and initiating the Spanish Civil War. Three years later, after excessive intervention by the great powers, various international pacts being signed and then broken, as well as a wee bit of war crimes, in 1939 the Civil War concluded with a right-wing victory under the leadership of General Francisco Franco just in time for World War II to begin only a few months later in September. This is where Tungsten gets tied up into the complicated diplomatic relationships of 1940s Europe. The largest natural deposits of tungsten in Europe exist in the Iberian Peninsula, within both Spain and Portugal. Now in Portugal, the Salazar government already had strong ties with the British and therefore prioritised trading with the Allies. But in Spain, matters were far more complicated. The Civil War had obviously devastated the nation's infrastructure, and Franco was desperate to raise funds to rebuild the country. Spain also owed the Axis, due to all of the loaned military and material support Franco had received during the Civil War. Therefore, following the capitulation of France in 1940, Spain began to provide Nazi Germany with a huge amount of tungsten to fuel the German war machine. This escalated throughout the war, with the income from tungsten exports in Spain rising from just $70,000 at the beginning of 1940, to over $15 million by 1943. Spain's increased trading with the Axis certainly didn't go unnoticed by the Allies. But the Allies couldn't just force Spain to stop trading with the Axis. Spain's position as a neutral country was somewhat questionable, as Franco shared many similar political beliefs and ideologies to Mussolini and Hitler. The British feared that putting too much pressure on the Spanish would force them into joining the war which would most certainly result in the loss of Gibraltar and therefore the loss of access to the Mediterranean Sea via the Atlantic. So alternatively, in the early stages of the war, the British began to purchase surplus amounts of tungsten from Spain as well. This artificially increased the price of tungsten, thereby forcing the Germans to expend even more funds to acquire the same amount of tungsten. This trading rivalry became known as the Wolfram Crisis, which continued up until November 1943, by which point tungsten accounted for nearly 20% of Spanish exports and 1% of total national GDP. At this stage in the war, it became increasingly clear that the Axis was losing. 
With support from the Americans and believing that they now firmly held the upper hand, a delegation of British and American ambassadors served the Spanish government a memoranda to stop trading tungsten with Germany and other Axis members. This was obviously a very difficult demand to accept as the importance of tungsten exports to the still struggling Spanish economy had grown significantly. So the Spanish responded with a simple no. The Allies persisted, but the Spanish continued to refuse. This culminated in the United States issuing an oil embargo against Spain in January 1944. Weeks later, embargoes on Spanish cotton exports were also added, which jeopardised the Catalan textile industry. This was obviously not a very ideal situation for the Spanish. Sure, the Spanish economy might fail with no tungsten exports, but it would most certainly fail without oil or support from other industries. But unwilling to call it quits, Franco decided to go to the negotiation table. What followed was a secret agreement between America, the UK and Spain. In exchange for ending the trade embargo, Spain would limit tungsten exports to just 20 tonnes per month to Germany. To put that into perspective, Spanish tungsten mines were exporting nearly 1,396 tonnes in 1943. So this cap to German exports would severely hinder Germany's shell producing capabilities. Additionally, the Americans and British promised Franco future economic support if Spain would ban German spies from entering the country, close the German consulate at Tangiers, and recall the Spanish Blue Division, a military unit of Spanish volunteers serving on the Eastern Front with the Germans. Now the Germans had tried to offer Franco a similar deal earlier in the war. Hitler promised Franco control over Gibraltar and greater financial aid if Spain ceased trading with the Allies and either joined the war against the Allies or allowed German troops to march through Spain to capture the Rock. But Spain was in no position to fight any large conflict following the devastation of the Civil War. Additionally, Franco made additional demands from the Germans, such as Spanish annexation of French North Africa. Such demands were obviously far too expensive for the Germans to accept and risk ruining the already unstable relationship between Vichy France and the Axis. Believing that Spain's neutrality was preferable to the cost of convincing them to join the war, Hitler abandoned his plans in Iberia shortly thereafter. The outcome of the Wolfram Crisis was hailed as a diplomatic victory by the Spanish leadership at the time. Rather than completely ceasing trade with Germany, Spain was still allowed to trade tungsten in a limited amount. The Americans blamed the failure to reach a total ban on exports on the British, believing that they had been too soft on the Spanish. Indeed, Churchill later thanked the Spanish for their service during a speech to the House of Commons later that year. Ultimately, the Tungsten War was an interesting insight into the various methods the Allies used to get the upper hand against the Axis. Similar diplomatic conflicts and backroom strategies would be used all across the globe throughout World War II, in places such as Turkey, Goa and parts of South America. It was a blunder for the Germans and a headache for the Allies, making the Spanish, after nearly half a century of chaos, the real winners. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. This is certainly a very underappreciated subject, and with so much of the history of World War II being focused on battles and conflict, I thought that it would be nice to look at the diplomatic side of things for a change. So far, 2023 has been a busy year for me, but hopefully I'll be free to do way more content in the near future. Thank you for watching and goodbye.